We move into Conference USA Part 1 here, and we are going to start from the bottom and reach our way back up to the top. So today, we've got these six teams that performed, uh, I'll say the worst. Um, some of them definitely were the worst. But we'll go ahead and start with those. Conference USA Part 1, because there are no divisions as of right now. Florida International. We will pull it up on the screen here. Florida International went 1-11 and last year. Butch Davis was, uh, he resigned or retired or was let go or whatever uh, pretty quickly last year. Went 1-11, and uh, went 0-8 in the conference. Their postgame win expectancy said that they should have been a 2-10 and team instead of a 1-11, but regardless, they were still bad at pretty much every facet of the game. If you look at what they're losing, that's even scarier. Now, they do bring in new head coach Mike McIntyre. Uh, they lost Miles Frazier, a uh, big-time transfer offensive lineman to LSU. They lost their quarterback, Max Bortenschlager. Uh, the running back, Devontae Price. The safety, Richard Dames. Like, they had some good pieces here. Uh, Dante Keyes transferred out. The left guard, uh, Sion Finau, transferred over to Purdue. Uh, you know, they've got, they had some guys there. And they weren't able to do anything with it. Now, Looking at what they did just overall, by the way, their returning production is number 120 in the country. That's not good, but maybe it doesn't matter with a new coach coming in. Who knows? On top of that, uh, you look at what they did offensively and defensively. PPA per drive was number 113 on offense, number 125 on defense. They couldn't stop a nosebleed last year. It was awful. And then on top of that, you couldn't keep up with anybody because the offense couldn't score. Um, here's what to know about the offense. Big play receivers in Chambers and St. Felix, but who is going to get on the ball? We're trying to figure that out. I would imagine it's going to be the Duke transfer, uh, Gunnar Holmberg. But is he good enough to come in and improve that offense? Well, uh, obviously, this is a wait-and-see situation here. All five offensive linemen uh, that are coming back had at least 100 snaps last year, so they did get some experience. But the right tackle, Hudson, is the hoss here. Uh, you've only got 280 returning running back snaps, and... And all the guys that are that have experience are small. So I don't know what McIntyre is going to do with this offense. They may have to go pass happy. I'm not sure. You're not going to get a lot of pass blocking from those bunch. So we'll see, though. We'll see. Um, here's what to know about the defense. McIntyre has rebuilt teams, uh, especially at Colorado and San Jose State, with defense. But, my God. Goodness, there's a lot of work to do here. Uh, roster strength, they're number 109 in the country out of 130. That's definitely better than last play. Or sorry, I guess it's 131 now that James Madison has been added. But uh, this is this is going to be a rough rebuild. Uh, they've got very little experience at linebacker. Uh, you probably should watch the transfer uh, manual. Uh, six secondary players had 219-plus snaps last year. Three other guys also got snaps. So they have got some experience in the secondary but I don't know what that necessarily means because they were number 124 in defensive pass success rate last year. Just just not good. Defensive line could improve based on experience, but at this point, anything over last year should be an improvement. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than 125 in predicted points added per drive. I mean, that's just bad. Just bad. Uh, keys to the season here, uh, Mike McIntyre, he's built up bad programs before, uh, He but the issue here, of course, is that he has been good with good ADs and administrations that have been behind the football program, I don't know that he's got that at Florida International. I'm just not sure. Um, FIU, I mean, this roster is going to need to be rebuilt. The question is, can it be rebuilt? I'm not sure. You know, it, early on in the Butch Davis era, they looked like a pretty good team. I think they won nine games one year. Like, it looked like they had that thing rolling. And they never invested in it. They never put anything into it. And, I mean, it just fell away. Like, it, the question here, is the administration going to work with McIntyre? Or is this just, you know, just another program? I mean, we'll have to see. We will have to see. Uh, little talent and little experience does not exactly project a good season. you got to clean up the turnovers from last year. They were number 128 in turnover margin. You keep beating yourself. That's going to kill you every time. Um, they need to improve success rate. At, at every facet of the game. Uh, number 105 in rushing success rate on offense, 119 in passing success rate, and then on defense, number 122 and number 124 in those areas. My my record here is 3-9, and nine, 
So it's an improvement over last year, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that they play Bryant, UConn, and New Mexico State. Because I don't expect a whole lot out of them either, and I think that this is a slightly better roster than New Mexico State and UConn. So 3-9, and 0-8 oh in the conference again. The projected SP Plus record is 4-8. and eight. I'm going to go under that. I just, I, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. This does not look like a a good team. I will I will say that. It does not look like a good team. We will move on from there. Of course, write down my times here. Da-da-da. The Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. We're going to start that up. They've got a brand new coach as well. Sonny Cumbie comes in. And post-game win expectancy last year should have been a four and eight team. They ended up three and nine. This was a team that had some close calls early with some pretty decent teams. Let's talk about what they lost. Bub Means, the wide receivers, headed over to uh, Pittsburgh. Austin Kendall is gone. Uh, Marcus Williams, the running back, is out. Linebacker Trey Baldwin, cornerback Balin Buchanan. Uh, overall, this team was not... They weren't putrid. They were better than 3-9, and nine, I thought. But, eh, I mean, we'll see. Number 113 in returning production, that is not great. Uh, defense, though, does return 76, uh, sorry, 60%. Uh, they're number 76 in the country in that. So, uh, looking at the offense, the new co-offensive coordinators, Scott Parr and, uh, and Jake Brown. Jake Brown was an assistant with Sonny Cumbie at Texas Tech recently, and Scott Parr was the head coach at Navarro College. Both of these guys, I would imagine, will be as aggressive as Cumbie is. Uh, they like to throw the ball around. They like to play fast. Uh, the offensive line looks pretty strong. The wide receivers, Smoke Harris, Trey Harris, and the LSU transfer, Devontae Lee, look like they're going to fit Cumbie's offense really quickly. Uh, the question at quarterback, of course, does Downing or McNeil start? Uh, who knows? I, I think Downing is probably going to be the guy because he knows Cumbie's offense already. He came with him from Texas Tech. Uh, rushing success was putrid last year, number 115 in rushing success rate. Um but when you look at the running back, Keon Henry Brooks, he could pop this year. He certainly could be good. On defense, new D.C. is Scott Power. He was the D.C. at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, they were number one in the WAC in FCS in scoring defense, in total defense, in interceptions, and da 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 He likes to create havoc. He's uh, They're incredibly aggressive. That's going to be a theme for today's show, I feel like. Uh, they have to replace eight guys with 220-plus snaps. But uh, the aggressive defense there, remember Stephen F. Austin last year had 105 tackles for loss. They had 48 and a half sacks. Uh, it, his style, his scheme should fit the younger guys that they got, like the defensive end Clark, the linebacker Grubbs there. Defense is stronger than the offense here. Um, but they were not very efficient last year, uh, especially against the pass. They were number 109 in passing success rate allowed. So that was definitely not good. They do have four guys in the secondary that have – you know, big-time experience, the question is, how good are they? Just because you return players doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get better. Uh, the top players here, uh, we talked about the wide receivers. Uh, Smoke Harris, you know, I brought in Devontae Lee uh, as one of my top players here. The safety, B.J. Williams. Uh, the linebacker, Tyler Grubbs. Um, defensive end, Deshaun Hall. Like, those guys are going to be really, really good. Uh, keys to the season. Is this an all-or-nothing team? Like, they were really undisciplined last year. They went 2-5 and five in one-score games, uh, and that included one-score losses to Mississippi State, SMU, and NC State. They lost by one to Mississippi State. They lost by two on a last-second Hail Mary, uh, which, how about this, a really long pass, not a Hail Mary, uh, to SMU. And then NC State, they only lost by a touchdown. Uh, the transfer quarterback downing at Texas Tech, like he, he knows Cumbie's offense. The three wide receivers could all be big playmakers. It's super aggressive on offense and super aggressive on defense. This team is going to be a lot of fun to watch every single weekend. But when you look at overall roster strength, etc., cetera, uh, they're number 109 in roster strength. Just to put that in, you know, in the same perspective with, uh, with Florida International, FIU is number 108. Like, Louisiana Tech's roster has, has dropped significantly. Uh, looking at the schedule... I mean, I've got them at four and eight. Maybe I see them at five and seven. I don't think this is a bowl team, but they could certainly sneak up and beat some teams very 
early on for sure. They play at Missouri. They play Stephen F. Austin. They got at Clemson and then at South Alabama before their bye week, which is the first weekend in October. They just got a rough run of it when it comes to uh, the Conference USA schedule. You know, obviously, probably going to lose to Missouri, probably going to lose to Clemson, and I've got them losing at South Alabama. On top of that, UTEP I don't think is a gimme at all. I think UTEP's pretty good this year. We'll talk about them here in just a minute. Uh, after that, at North Texas, like I've got a, right, a win over Rice, FIU, and Middle Tennessee, but at UTSA, at Charlotte, and UAB to close out, this is rough. So I've got them at 4-8. and eight. Uh, Don't feel great about it. They could definitely be 5-7. and seven. Maybe maybe Sonny Cumbie finds a way to get this team bowling early, but I don't see it to start off with. I'll say that. I don't see it. So from there, we'll move on to the Rice Owls. And I'll write my time down here. Rice last year. Whew. Mike Bloomgren, what are you doing? What are you doing? This was uh, this was rough. Four and eight last year. Uh, Post game win expectancy said they should have been five and seven, but they were three and nine against the spread. And when you look at some of these numbers, I mean, uh, defense I kind of thought was supposed to be their thing, defense and running the football, and they couldn't do either. Uh, we'll we'll skip over the big losses here because there are quite a few of them. They are number seventy four in returning production, but that's number one hundred two on offense and number thirty seven on defense. So, you're bringing back a bunch of players on defense. Maybe they're going to get better, but we'll see. We'll start off with the offense. Uh, Tui Asasopo is the offensive coordinator. He spent 12 years in the Pac-12. He joined Rice in 2021, and it didn't go well. Uh, The offense hasn't really been good at any point under Bloomgren, and a lot of the potential playmakers that they've got all transferred out, and that's three wide receivers, a running back, tight end, and two offensive linemen. Uh, At quarterback... Is Wiley Green as good as Jake Constantine? I don't know that. We'll see. Um, If he's the same, this team is in a lot of trouble. I know that. I don't know the pass success rate can maintain number 32 in the country. Uh, They were very successful throwing the football last year. Uh, The issue is, you know, they they didn't do a whole lot with it. They they didn't score a ton of points. Uh, As far as the defense, Brian Smith has been the D.C. there since 2018. And last year is the first year that it really just dropped off because they had kind of they had kind of been climbing, uh, and then they they completely fell apart last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got a note here: defense had been a strong suit, finishing 54th in SP Plus in 2020. They crashed to number 123 last year. If you look at the PPA per drive, they were number 110. So SP Plus is Bill Conley's deal. We've talked about it on the show before, but that's uh, basically defensive efficiency, right? Uh, the cornerback. And defensive tackle spots have studs. But where are the playmakers at defensive end and linebacker? I I don't see where those guys are. And Gabe Taylor should be good at safety. Uh, outside of that, like the secondary, even with experience, looks weak. Like this is not a very good roster. Uh, roster strength here, by the way, number 119, courtesy of our guys over at CFB Winning Edge. At the top players this year, I mean, I brought up Gabe Taylor, but... You know, we, you've got the center or right guard, the offensive lineman, Shea Baker. you got wide receiver Sam Crawford coming in. And he could certainly be good. I just, I don't feel good about this team. Uh, no real staff changes. You only got seven incoming transfers, and I don't know that any of them are dynamite other than maybe Crawford. Um, you got 12 outgoing transfers that looked like they had been built up and developed, and then they just decided to leave. Simple fundamentals here were bad. Number 85 in turnover margin, number 110 in penalties per game. Uh, those need to be cleaned up. Uh, this could be really tough, especially with underclassmen. On offense, like, the offense has always leaned on running the ball. Like, I, I brought up how good they were passing the ball, and yet they only threw it 42% of the time in 2021. Uh, the wrestling success rate again, number 116. That, how, how do you ever get that bad if you are going to run the football 58% of the time? I, I, this this kind of stuff doesn't make sense. Uh as far as defense, was last year an aberration? Or was this the start of a decline that maybe could find Bloomgren looking for a new job? You know, moving into the AAC next year, do you want to continue on with a sixth year of Bloomgren if they do not do well this year? And I don't know the answer to that. 70% uh, or 60% returning production is is okay. 70% on defense is pretty good. I don't like this schedule. I don't like this team. Um 
I've got them winning one game. I might could I might could see them winning another one somewhere. You know, maybe you get UTEP at home, maybe, uh, but you don't get FIU this year. You don't get any of the easy ones, and and you play, you know, teams that you might be able to fare okay against. You play them on the road this year. This is not. Good. I've got them one and eleven, um, but we'll see. We'll see what to make out of that. Let's go on and hit a few more ads, and then we'll be right back. Let's take a break from the show for just a minute to give you some info on things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter, at Winning Cures, or you can follow the guys at GaryWCE and at Chris B. Giannini, or you can also follow us on Facebook. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit BetUSTV.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. If you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show, too. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. The Charlotte 49ers are officially on the clock here. And whew, Will Healy, I like Will Healy a lot. We've talked about him on the show for Multiple years now, dating back to when he was at Austin P. Uh, going to bring them up on the screen. Went five and seven last year. Now, that's quite the uh, overachievement, I will say, because they went uh, 3.23 and 8.77 in postgame win expectancy last year. That should have been about three and nine. Uh, th- you won't find a bigger discrepancy between offense and defense than this bunch. You look at these guys. They did lose some guys, like some horses. Um, but, man, the offense was great, and the defense was abysmal. Number 36 in offensive PPA per drive, and number 127 in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, there's not a bigger discrepancy anywhere in the country than that. you got to get better on defense, and you got to maintain that offense. And I, I would expect Healy to be able to do that, uh, starting off on offense, so long as Chris Reynolds stays healthy. Uh, this team is going to have a chance in pretty much every game. Uh, especially with those wide receivers. You got Tucker, you got Dubose, guys like that. Uh, there's a lot of returning snaps on the offensive line. Like, I like Bird, uh, the running back here, but, you know, at number 64 in rushing success rate, they could probably get a little bit better at that. That would certainly serve them a little bit better. Uh, Shadrick Bird is the running back there. As far as defense, uh, nearly anything is going to be better than last season. Number 45 in returning production here, no, that's 68%, but. The defensive roster strength, there's just not a lot of talent there. I mean, they're number 105 in the country as far as uh, roster strength goes. Um, The defensive end, Watts, is an absolute stud. I mean, just a stud. But uh, he can only do so much. You know, you you need the three transfers, that's Sadiq, Monroe, and Jones, to show up in a big way this year. There's only 402 snaps returning at linebacker. Like, this is, this could get, they, they could look the exact same as they did. Uh, the offense, by the way, um, you know, they, they bring back 83% of the offense. These guys all know the system, and they were good in it last year. Um, keys to the season here. The defense has been the issue since Healy started. Their scoring defense last year was number 114. In 2020, it was number 88. And then in 2019, it was number 103. They brought in a new D.C., Greg Brown, who has been around the block for sure. I don't know if he can fix that. But I'm sure he's going to give it a, a new world with a new scheme and a new spin on it. But we'll see. you got to fix the turnover margin, number 102, and the penalties per game stat. They were number 84 in that spot. You cannot keep beating yourself here. Uh, on top of that, with such a good offense, maybe they should boost plays per game. I mean, they were number 90 in that spot last year. If you've got a great offense, maybe try and give them the ball more. But we'll see. Healy's been a star in the making since he was at Austin P. Like I said, I've been talking about him for a long, long time. Uh, but Charlotte did take a downturn last year. You know, can he reverse this slide? And, and if so, which I, I think that he will, uh, I kind of expect this much to go bowling this year. I, I've got him at 6-6. Six and six. 
you know, I've got uh, I got wins over William and Mary, UTEP, uh, Rice, FIU, Western Kentucky, and Louisiana Tech. Like the schedule does set up pretty well for them this year, uh, as opposed to last year. But whoo, that's uh, this team. If that defense doesn't get fixed, like they are going to be in a whole world of hurt. Like this, it, it's going to be bad. It it could really really be bad. Um, we'll move on to Florida Atlantic. And they are next on the list. We've only got a couple more here. Willie Taggart, five and seven last year. Post game win expectancy said they should have been a little bit better. Uh, six and six roundabout, maybe even could have been seven and five. Um, but again, they beat themselves. Number ninety three in penalties per game, sixty five in turnover margin. We've got another new offensive coordinator here, and that's Brent Deerman. Uh, we'll start off on the offense on this bunch. Uh, Brent Deerman was the. MTSU offensive coordinator last year, he was at Kansas under Les Miles prior to that. You remember when Miles got really close to beating Texas, and I think his first year he had fired his offensive coordinator after just a couple of games, and then they hung 48 on Texas? Yeah, this is the same guy. So uh, we'll see what what they can end up doing here. Nikosi Perry, he was inconsistent last year. He's the quarterback there. But now going into his second season, um, you know, they got big play threats. They got the running back forward. They got wide receivers, Burton and Wester. Uh, you, the offensive line brings back four starting offensive linemen that look like they're they're pretty decently talented. Uh, same old questions here. Does experience matter for the players that weren't good last year? Um, I don't know that. I, I just, who knows? Who knows? Um, on defense, Mike Stoops left. He was the defensive coordinator last year. He joined his brother at Kentucky to be an offensive line, or sorry, an inside linebackers coach. Uh, the new defense coordinator is Todd Orlando. So big names, big names here, but mm, who knows? Uh, the defense, especially the run defense, is the reason the team was competitive last year. They were number 39 in rushing success rate allowed on defense. Uh, as far as like guys to watch out for, the nose tackle, Evan Anderson, 356 pounds. Like Watch that guy. And then watch the defensive end joiner. He is an absolute stud. Secondary's got multiple seniors. They were not as good as the run defense last year. Uh, they were number 60 in passing success rate allowed, and they allowed uh, the number 87 explosive play rate in the country. So that's definitely not good. Jones and Moultrie return at linebacker, but the three Power 5 transfers that they bring out, they, they could get snaps. They could certainly get snaps. The keys to the season. They should have won more than they did last year. We know that much. Uh, on top of that, Willie Taggart has to find a way to improve this offense. Like, you got to score points to win games. And that's the bottom line. Doesn't matter how good the defense is. Being aggressive can certainly lead to penalties, uh, but you got to clean it up. I mean, number 93 in penalties per game is not good. Uh, if your turnover margin isn't going to be top 40, you definitely need the penalties cleaned up. Can a new coaching staff unlock more potential and limit errors? That is the question. That is a key to the season here. I think they're going to be better than they were last year. I think the schedule sets up a little bit easier for them. I've got them going 7-5. and five. I, I like I like Florida, uh, excuse me, Florida Atlantic this year. Uh, FAU looks like they could be headed in the right direction. Willie Taggart sometimes can take a little while to get the ball rolling, and it looks like Boca Raton is going to give him time to get this thing done. So move from five and seven last year up to seven and five this year. Who knows what the next year could bring if they return all of these guys? Finally, our last preview for the day, and we will move on to the UTEP Miners. Not a team that typically we would spend a lot of time talking about, but my goodness, last year uh, we spent a lot of time talking about them. Dana DeMell took them bowling last year. Uh, went seven and six, or six and seven. I don't remember either one. I've got it seven and six. I might have I might have put that down wrong. Post game win expectancy last year seven point six nine and four point three one. So closer to eight wins as opposed to just seven. Uh, they did lose the bowl game, so. There you go. Returning production is number 28 in the country here. That's definitely a good thing. However, they lose their biggest playmaker in Jacob Cowing. He transferred to Arizona. He's the wide receiver. Uh, looking at the offense here, Gavin Hardison is back, uh, along with the wide receivers Tyron Smith and Reynaldo Flores. Uh, can they remain explosive without the wide receivers Garrett and Cowing? I, you would think, you know, they're at least going to try. But I don't know. Those guys were... Those guys were studs. The running back, Ronald Awat, returns along with four offensive linemen with a lot of experience. Rushing success rate was number 127, though. 
you got to find consistency across the board here. They were number two in explosive play rate on offense last year. you got to be better than number 70 in PPA per drive. Uh, the defense is what held them up. They, the defense was really, really good early part of last year, but, man, that schedule went bananas on them late. Uh, they averaged giving up 5.88 yards per play in the last five games of the season. They were more than five yards per play allowed in every single game in that stretch. They were number 25 in PPA per drive, though, and that shows you how good they were to start off the year. They got five defensive backs with 200-plus snaps returning, along with five defensive linemen with 300-plus snaps, but only two linebackers uh, are coming back. They Now, those those two linebackers, 799 snaps and 810 snaps. They returned four different players that had over 10 tackles for loss last year. They were not great against explosive offenses, but you, you don't find a lot of those on the schedule this year. So that's definitely good. Uh, keys for the season, like look, they went seven and zero against teams that uh, ranked 99th or worse in SP plus, zero and six against anyone better in 2021. Um, they're returning 15 starters, and the schedule is forgiving here. The team went bowling even with the number 123 turnover margin and number 124 in penalties per game. You got to fix that. You can't beat yourself here. I like this team. I think they're okay. I've got them at six and six. Uh, I think they. You know, I think they're going bowling again. I think Dana DeMel has built a pretty good culture here. Like, I really, really like this team. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you